something that I've seen a lot of times this year uh, amongst our discourse of the Baltimore Ravens and the status of the Baltimore Ravens uh, each and every week. Um, I've seen a lot of people say that they feel like Ravens fans are entitled or Ravens fans are even privileged uh, when they hear the complaints and they hear the gripes about the team, despite whatever their record could be at the current time. And th this is not the first year that we've heard that. We've heard it in previous years as well. Um, and in the first question that we're going to get into in a little bit, somebody could possibly feel the same. But before we get into it, I got to give a special shout out to the Team Keep It Clean channel members. I haven't been giving the channel members enough love. Shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean channel members. They are my guy STTB Baby. I feel like I was talking to him like the whole game uh, during the live stream the other day. Uh, also, my guy Harry Holland. Appreciate you because he's also a Team Keep It Clean patron. Uh, shout out to Christian. Uh, DJ Troop Peak coming back And my guy Patrick So I appreciate all y'all just supporting like crazy And also shout out to the newest uh, Team Keep It Clean patron uh, My guy Raven Pride uh, So I appreciate everybody Thank you all for supporting um, And you know what Let's just get straight into it And the first question is coming from my guy Marv Hood He said I think we are privileged uh, he said, Professor Engraven. Nope, not no professor. But anyway, Professor Engraven, how are you these days? As usual, thank you for your an analysis and more importantly, the team keep it clean approach to conversations. It's top class. We haven't spoken much since that debacle when, <laughs> when I predicted Baltimore would blow out Tennessee in the playoffs. That was a sad night. It was. It was. I, I really thought, I remember thinking in that game, going into that game, I thought the Ravens might start off a little bit slow. Uh, but then they would pick it up and then they were going to take off with it. That's how I felt the game was going to go. It did not go like that. Uh, anyway, he said, I want to address complaints slash petitions against Harbaugh that gradually increased over what's been a few years. I discovered a Fire Harbaugh Facebook page even. Hmm. I figured I'd have a discussion on this topic with a common sense rational gentleman. Where's that person at? Unless you're going to be having a conversation in the mirror or something. You tell, if you're talking about me, I don't know who you're talking about. But anyway, uh, he said, correct me if I'm wrong, but how many first round collegiate players have made it to our roster within the first 10 picks? What do you mean? Let me see. How many first round collegiate players have made it to our roster within the first 10 picks? Oh, OK. Are you saying the Ravens haven't drafted in the top 10 in like forever? I think what was it? Ronnie Stanley and. I think that's it under Harbaugh, right? Just Ronnie Stanley, right? I think. But anyway, uh, he said, how many future Hall of Famers has Harbaugh coached since uh, Ray Lewis, A. Reed, Terrell Suggs, and Yonder retired? Um, Justin Tucker. Hey, so yeah, there we go. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he said, name six Pro Bowlers in their prime since our Super Bowl win. Since six Pro Bowlers in their prime, Justin Tucker, um, mm, but this has been Lamar Jackson. Uh, but I feel like he hadn't even reached his prime yet. But again, I we get into that later. Um, six Pro Bowlers in their prime. Oh, since our Super Bowl win, because I was getting ready to say Ray Rice, but that before the Super Bowl win, and then y'all know how that happened afterwards. Um, six Pro Bowlers in their prime. Mark Andrews, but I feel like Mark Andrews. I feel like with more around him, he could be even better. Um. Uh, Marlon Humphrey Well was he a pro bowler last year Well I, well, this year he should be Definitely but um So I would, I would say Marlon Humphrey I know it's not a, he's not an official pro bowler yet I don't, No he did make the pro bowl Either, either way let, let, let me just keep going uh, He said you can even include Oh, He said you can even include Tucker if you like I did include him um, Finally how many of our selected physical Dominant pro bowl players have been virtually Injury free Well that would be like Nobody uh, Minus Justin Tucker Cause Yeah You know how the injuries go He said all these Playoff slash Super Bowl teams Littered with early First rounders And pro bowlers uh, And Harbaugh makes the playoffs With late round talent And a couple of senior uh, A couple of senior citizens I mean Hall of Famers I like how you put that That's funny We haven't had horrible enough Loss records under Harbaugh To pick less than 10th position Hardly This brings me to Harbaugh's biggest strength His ability to organize Lesser dominant or skilled players To overachieve as a team I don't know another coach Who would achieve the same result With the said players Let's not forget about The advancement of Frank Walker He came from a mighty long way Let's not talk about 
are being one of the least penalized teams each year. Under Harbaugh, I saw us handle and sometimes manhandle the likes of Brady, Breeze, Manning, and Roethlisberger. Their former coaches are revered in their respective towns. Thank you for your time. We're all hoping for the best for Mr. Hamlin. Uh, that was gut wrenching. And peace and take care. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And shout out to Marvin from the uh, the Bahamas. Um, you made some good points, but you you also did what a lot of people do. Uh, it's about the past. You made it about the past, especially at the end right there, because you brought up a lot of these guys are retired. Because you brought up Brady. Well, he's still playing, obviously, but he's been playing literally for forever. Breeze, Manning, Roethlisberger. Um, but you did also talk about the current, uh, about how the Ravens, they hardly ever pick less than 10 or higher than 10. Because they don't. They don't. 14 was the highest pick that they've had in literally, like, forever. Um, but at the same time, like... What have the Ravens accomplished? Because I'm, I'm going to use the same time, the timeline that you used, too. You said since the 2012 Super Bowl. I, I'll use that same timeline. What, what have the Ravens accomplished since then? And I, I think one of the biggest frustrations is that they've had some nice rosters. They've had some talented people. Um, and especially right now over the past five years, they, they've had somebody really, really special. But they just haven't done everything that they could have possibly done to get the most out of that said player they haven't and they've what do they have one is it one playoff no it's two playoff wins in the past 10 years hopefully this year you can add some more to it um because they won in 2014 because they beat the Steelers um and then that's when they lost to the Patriots uh, and then the Ravens beat the Titans like two years ago, 2020. Yeah, they beat the Titans. So they haven't been having playoff success. And I know, uh, yeah, they, they, take, they, they normally haven't been having losing seasons technically, but they ain't been doing nothing. They ain't been doing nothing. So how, how long should we hold on to the past for? You talked about them being one of the least penalized teams. I don't know if that's accurate or not, so I can't really speak on that itself. But I do know uh, the Ravens, They even if they are the, one of the most least penalized teams, those penalties that they're getting, they're repeat offenders with them. They're, repeat, they're getting a lot of the same type of penalties, the same stuff. 12 men on the field. Who's that on? That's coaching. The the delayed game, get, getting the snap off super, super late. Who's that on? It's, it's a lot of the same stuff. The false starts, the, the defensive holdings. The, the, they, a lot of times, Ravens are their own worst enemy. They're their own worst enemy. Hardball. Um, accountability is something that a lot of times Hardball will evade. Will evade of accountability. Like true accountability. You as a head coach, you supposed to be like you supposed to be the one running the show. Uh, you gotta hold the people under you accountable too. We we don't be seeing that. So I can't. Yeah, hey, in the past Harbaugh, they obviously had a lot of success. His first five years ended up winning the Super Bowl was amazing. That that was a great five years. Um, then after that, it's like, all right, how do you, how you gonna follow that up? What are you gonna do next? It's like, oh, okay, well. All right, that's that's that. We we really haven't seen much of anything, especially with the the the, the roster that they've had. They've had opportunities, but they just haven't taken the most of them. So I I can't say that the Ravens fans are are privileged. Ravens fans are entitled or anything like that. No, we just we have high expectations. If this team, this franchise is as great as we think it is, and as great as a lot of people think it is, then they should not just be competitive. They should be true contenders, a lot more than they have been, and they haven't been. They haven't been. So I know so many people, like the media especially, they always get the Ravens all this praise. Oh, it's a great franchise. And it's a, good, it's a really good franchise. Don't get me wrong. Um, but they, I feel like so much of the praise that they get for the football field, the, the product on the football field, is based off of past stuff. It's based off of stuff back then. Yeah, they have, has, has, have had some nice records and whatnot. So overall, the, the, the record is nice. But where's the true success? Are we just are we basing Ravens' true success based off of the regular season? 
Just again, that that's part of it. Don't get me wrong, that's part of it. Because in order to even get to the postseason, you gotta have success in the regular season. So hey, you gotta give them credit for that. But that's usually where it stops for them. And if that's usually where it stops for them, how great truly are they? Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it, right and grave it. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question you want to. Uh, and if you want to be a part of it, if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, if you want to also be a part of it and you're not a patron, which is fine, uh, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Do not send it anywhere else. Anyway, uh, next question came from a newer Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, John. He said, hey, bro, how are you in the family? Hey, we're doing really, really, really good. Uh, he said, love what you do. Keep it up. Uh, I don't know what free... Oh, appreciate that, man. He said, I don't know what free agent wide receivers are out there next year. Ooh, it's looking rough. Uh, but who would you take? And I hate to say this, but if Lamar doesn't sign, hopefully Ravens are smart enough to trade for first-round picks. Stay blessed. Keep up the awesome work. Uh, P.S. Huntley is not better than Lamar. Okay, bro, I am out. Hopefully, like Roman is soon. All right, shout out to John, man. Um, but uh, whew, free agent wide receiver is ugly. It, it's ugly out there. I think Odell Beckham Jr. is the best one. Odell Beckham Jr. he got a lot of injury problems. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's slim pickings. So if Ravens really gonna upgrade some, uh, they're gonna have to go via trade. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, "What's up, Raven? Hope you and your family uh, have a blessed year." Uh, it's your boy Raven Pride. I'm so sorry that I've been out of the contact with Team Keep It Clean. I'm doing better. Hey, we, oh, I had got sick, but much better. Hey, I'm glad you're doing better, man. Don't don't ever apologize for being out of contact or being out of the loop. Any, don't don't apologize for that. The, yeah, you don't need to. Uh, he said, I want to sum this up real quick. After seeing what's been going on with this Lamar situation, I'm going to be real about this. To me, it seems the Ravens have no intention on paying Lamar. And to my point, they refuse to give him other QB type weapons to succeed. Uh, so as long as they continue to keep the fan base coming because Lamar brings sales to the game, that's all they want. And uh, I'm not going to settle for less. Thanks, brother. And God bless. Appreciate you, man. Um, I see that, that with what you said. You said you feel like they don't have any intention on paying Lamar. Which that could be the case, um, but uh, if they didn't, then you talked about so as long as they continue to keep the fan base coming because Lamar brings sales to the game, that's all they want. So they will have to make a decision then. Either you pay him, and yeah, you're gonna keep generating the fan interest and the sales and stuff like that, uh, or you don't pay him, and yeah, stuff is gonna take a hit. Stuff stuff will take a hit. You're still gonna uh, generate money. But it's, it's definitely going to be less money than uh, you would generate with a Lamar Jackson. Next question came from my guy, K. Rich. He said, hey, Graven, how you doing? We good, man. Appreciate you. I got a question for you. I'm wondering what you truthfully think should happen to the coaching staff in the offseason. I'm not expecting anything in the playoffs. And to be honest, we don't deserve to be in the playoffs. See, I, I can't say that. I can't say Ravens don't deserve to be in the playoffs. I can say they, they don't look like a playoff team recently, but I can't say they don't deserve to be in the playoffs because they won enough games to get into the playoffs. They, they won enough games to put them, themselves into the disposition to be in the playoffs. So I can't say they don't deserve to be there. But anyway, he said, the only reason we have Super Bowl dreams every year is because Lamar Jackson is our quarterback. And I feel like he goes underrated in our fan base because he is the only consistently great thing on our team besides special teams. And even that has lacked recently. Uh, I think we need to hire a complete offensive minded head coach to change the culture like an Eric Bieniemy. Uh, we are still playing today's game as we did when we won our last Super Bowl with Ray Rice, Bernard Pierce, and Vontae Leach. They're not even playing it like that. They ain't playing like that because they had some passing weapons on this team. And they had weapons that complemented each other perfectly. They had a big body possession receiver, Anquan Bolden. They had the deep threat uh, the speed receiver, Torrey Smith. And then they had uh, Jacoby Jones, who was like that third guy, that return guy, that special teams guy. But he could still make some plays here and there at wide receiver too. So they had guys that complemented each other wonderfully. They had Dennis Pitta and Ed Dixon at tight end. Nice little one-two punch there. They had Ray Rice and Bernard Pierce at running back. Vontae Leach at fullback. So they they had pieces that really complement each other. Nice, man. Uh, but anyway, um, he said the game has changed, and I think we need to change it. I agree. Uh, oh, no, he, excuse, excuse me. He said I think we need to change with it. I agree. Uh, especially with one of the most talented quarterbacks to walk this earth, Lamar Jackson. Might have gotten a little loose with this question, but I want to know uh, what you think we should do 
in the off season. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for hearing our questions. Oh, I appreciate it, man. And thank you for uh, for watching and supporting and being a patron. Um, but what what I think the Ravens should do, it it's it's been well documented. Um, go out and get somebody who's that guy receiver. Still draft one early. Uh, hope Rashad Bateman comes back and he can stay healthy. Um, Devin Duvernay, you hope he comes back and he can stay healthy. They kept Demarcus Robinson. Cool. I wouldn't have no problem with that, but I would still want them to go out and get somebody like that. Uh, you would have Mark Andrews. Oh, obviously, I want them to keep Lamar Jackson too. Um, but I just, I just, I just wonder what will really happen though uh, this off season because you, if if you keep Lamar Jackson, however you keep him, whether it's a franchise tag or it's you sign him to a large contract extension, it's gonna cost a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot of money. So I wonder, like, why, why should we – why are we at this point where it's taken to – or hope, we'll see what happens. But if it does happen like that, why are we still at this point going into year six where we're wondering, like, if the Ravens are really going to surround Lamar like that? That's a whole nother frustration. Though. I can dream. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, what's up, Ingram? Hope you and the family are doing well. I'm sure you saw what D-Hop said a few days ago. Whatever I can do if it's blocking, I'm not a guy that needs the ball. I'm not a complainer, but I know I can help my team when I do get the ball. That got me thinking. and Just hit me out. We trade our first round pick to Arizona for D-Hop. Sign OBJ to a two to three year deal. Nothing crazy. Extend Roquan and LJ. That offense with LJ, the D Hop, DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know why I could his name like slipped my mind completely just now. Uh, OBJ, Bateman, Duve, J.K. Gus, and Andrews. I'm sorry, we would be crazy, especially if we were able to keep most of the defense. Just a dream, but what do you think? I wouldn't be mad at that. Um, I don't even think it would take a first round pick to get DeAndre Hopkins. I really don't. I don't think it would take a first round pick. Um, I love DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, I would just be a little bit worried with the recent injuries and stuff, just a little bit. DeAndre Hopkins still that dude, man, but I would, that's so concern me a little bit. Now Mike Evans, ooh, Mike Evans is another one, but let's we'll see what happens with that. Um, yeah, it, it will be something, but as, at the same time, with all those pieces, uh, it would depend on the scheme of the offense more than anything if they will use those pieces the right way. Lamar's revelation. Next question came from my guy Leon. He said, Lamar must get out of there. The Ravens are full of holes and Lamar should be able to see it. When you have time to sit and observe, revelation comes. As Lamar has been out for the past four weeks, uh, this is what he should have understood about the Ravens. Number one, this is a six-win six win team masquerading as a playoff team. Let's be honest, what game did the Ravens win that we as fans have been convinced was in the bag? Uh, I cannot think of one dominating team win this season. I say the Jets win. The Jets um, I thought the Dolphins win was, but you see what happened there. Uh, and then the Patriots won after a while. So I guess Jets and Patriots. But anyway, uh, he said, I cannot think of one dominating team win this season. Uh, no win where the Ravens put a team away. The slogan should be for the Ravens what should have happened and what could have been. Number two, roster holes everywhere. No money and no picks to fix the holes, especially if Lamar is offered a much deserving contract. Let's take a look. Here's a breakdown of the Ravens roster situation and no money or draft picks to fix it. Coaching staff, complete overhaul. Although Giro is gone for sure. I don't know. You know, earlier this year, I thought that. I really thought that. I really thought this would be his last season. But... Um, sometimes Ravens they'd be doing some stuff, and it's like wow. They they sometimes they will shock you in, in a bad way. Um, some stuff in a good way, but so I mean, it, I would be like surprised, but at the same, I wouldn't be wouldn't be surprised if, if Giro got a contract extension this all season. But anyway, let's let's, let's, let's just keep moving. Uh, he said Giro's gone for sure, but if the head coach stays, it will be more of the same. That part is true. Uh, offense, wide receivers, repeatedly discuss needs and complete overhaul. Keep Bateman, see what you can get for everyone else. Do, uh would have had trade value, but the season-ending foot injury has his value in question, even as a Pro Bowl returner. Wallace and James probably have no value, so they are likely back just because they aren't free agents. Ooh, that that was tough right there. Um, mm. He said, O-line, solid, but never great. Injury-prone Ronnie Stanley is too expensive, but there's nothing the Ravens can do about it. That's true. You can't move him. You just got to hope that he's healthy. Uh, additionally, the right guard and tackle are aging both over 30, and Moses is up and down too often. That's a perfect explanation. Because Moses, he can have some high highs, but then them lows be like, whoa. Uh, tight end. Very solid group, but Nick Boyle has been phased out and needs to be released, and Josh Oliver may be an expense that is unnecessary. I mean, yeah, you got five tight ends. <laughs> With Nick Boyle, you don't even use him. He's your second highest paid tight end. Um, and you drafted too. You drafted Likely and Kolar. So, I mean, you're going to hope that maybe the second year is it for them. 
where they really make a turnaround. Uh, running back, solid, but worry about injuries, especially with all of them having had major knee injuries just last season. And with Gus' salary number, he may need to be a cap casualty. It's crazy. You're not the first person that said that. Well, you're the second person that said that. Because um, I know my guy Plex, he talked about that too. Wow. Uh, he said Justice Hill, Drake, leaving only JK for certain. Yeah, uh, Drake is gone, in my opinion. Especially, like, they've been having him inactive, like, ever since Gus been back. Um, so, yeah, he, he's gone. Uh, he said, as you see, just on offense, every position needs a major addition or quality depth added. With only one pick in 2023's first two rounds, what would the Ravens address with so many needs? They could do a thing where they trade back. But, you know, they're they, they not done with getting picks yet. They're going to get some more picks some way, somehow. Uh, but anyway, he said, no money to do it. Lamar knows if he gets his money, and he should. Even with G-Row gone, the potential for long-term success rises and falls with him still being the hero. Mm -hmm. Something Lamar is certainly considering Take the AFC North as an example Every team has a quarterback starter for the next year Except the Ravens Every team has big time whiteouts in place for next year Except the Ravens Every team has at least two healthy running backs in place for next year Except the Ravens Well, they, the Ra they got J.K. and Gus And they're healthy now so I think the Ravens would I think you can exclude them on, uh, on that part uh, Every team has improving offensive lines in place Except for next year Oh, excuse me In place for next year Except the Ravens um, Well, I don't know the contract situations Of all the other offensive lines Linemen or lines, whatever um, Ben Grubbs, he's a free agent Kevin Zeitler, I think he has one more year left on his deal And Morgan Moses What did they sign him to? A one-year deal or a two-year deal? I think it's a one No maybe it's a two or three I don't even remember Sorry uh, He said now what does Lamar see Except the Ravens uh, The Ravens have question marks of health Quality and contracts At all of these positions Especially quarterback And I haven't even got to the defense I was just about to say that I was about to say cornerback too And linebacker and, but anyway, let's keep going He said, now would you stay if you were LJ? I love the Ravens and have been a fan since 96 But this is a mess Honestly, the Ravens' performance makes a better case for Lamar to leave Than to stay Oof That was a powerful email um, Wow That was something right there And he continued it in another email He said, Lamar's revelation continued uh, As I said in the first email, this roster is full of obvious holes That we don't always address because the wide receiver room is so uninspiring <laughs> Lamar should have seen the, the defense for what it was in the Jaguars game When he put them ahead and the Jags needed a touchdown to win And got just that Oh yeah, and I forgot in that game And they went for two They went for two Jaguars are like, Ravens? Who? Please But anyway uh, Defensive roster holes D-line relies on an aging Campbell Who is very valuable But uh, has too much of a burden at his age uh, The big pickup Pierce Has been out with injury for most of the year And Ravens don't know if this is a sign of injury proneness to come Oh man yeah that's one that I, I forget about a lot But yeah that's that's tough Man just imagine these guys if they were healthy The worst part about football man Anyway he said um uh, Travis Jones is a highly uh, touted defensive lineman But he's made minimum impact And to make it worse uh, Justin Matabike, Broderick Washington uh, Will soon be in line for new contracts Leaving the future at this position in doubt uh, Pass rush is non-existent And to make it worse JPP, Houston are free agents uh, And the young pass rushers don't get home And the 2022 second round pick has been invisible Needs upgrading The Ravens better hope David Ajabo pays off next year Or George Pickens will haunt them for a decade just like I'm sure he does already. I mean, we, we've seen the games. The two George Pickens games against the Ravens. He done made some plays. But anyway, uh, in, interior linebackers. Really good, but both guys are in line for new contracts soon. Ravens almost have to keep both or they fall back in the same problem they had have had since Ray Lewis. Trying to find a solid duo to hold down the middle. If they wrongly trade Queen, they risk p positional uncertainty all over again. Building around the young uh, duo should be a focus. Safety, very solid. With high dollars invested in Williams and a high pick in Hamilton, Stone and Clark probably will be cap casualties. Also leaving this position, uh, this position's depth in question. Yeah, uh, Geno Stone, I think they got him on a one-year deal right now. Uh, Chuck Clark, I, I thought he was going to be gone last year, but I think definitely this offseason. Uh, corner, mediocre at best. Peters is gone. Pepe has been invisible most of the year. Yeah, Brandon is certainly more of a backup. Yeah, Marlon at this point is an overpriced slot corner rather than an outside cover guy. If we pull the tape, we see him over the past two years get black blacks by the young fast receivers on the outside. Mm. Uh, here again, every defensive position group has more questions than answers. The Ravens trade their second round pick for linebacker Smith. Good move, maybe, but looking at what is going to be. All around him defensively He may decide that he too needs to be out <laughs> He 
EDC has not really hit on a lot of draft picks over the past few years, and because so much money is tied up in, in aging vets, he failed to bring in young, talented depth on the defense. Uh, the Ravens have been made vulnerable uh, to go through a rebuild, even if they did not plan to. Oof. Wow. That's... Mm. Again, take the AFC North. Pittsburgh manhandled them last night on the ground, and when they needed a big catch, they got that too. Having Pickett and Pickens together as rookies on cheap deals makes them dangerous for a decade. Uh, Bengals have a duo at running back and could get off Nixon's deal soon to free up money. And they have a trio of receivers with the with the Ravens' former tight end <laughs> to terrorize uh, the team for years. Not to mention a defense that is middle of the road, but that offense makes that defense more potent. Yeah. It's true. Browns have an elite run game with offensive line. Watson could return to form next year, and they have two wideouts in place. Uh, the Ravens defense has questions or yeah, have questions that all those offenses make more difficult to answer. Lamar needs to get out of there so the Ravens can rebuild with the picks they get for him. It is inevitable that a rebuild is coming. Mm. That was like that was scary, man. The way you broke down literally every position and just woof. And that's something a lot of times um, I don't think about as far, not even the money, but just the lack of picks and just so many different holes. And that's what the draft is for. That's what free agency is for. But Ravens got, they like, this is huge. This is a huge offseason for them. Like, every offseason is huge, obviously. But this year, for sure, like, you got Lamar, obviously, that's number one. You got Roquan, that's number two. Um, you got Marcus Peters. You got Ben Grubbs. Um, you, you got, uh, I mean, not Ben Grubbs, Ben Powers. Um, I wonder if I said Grubbs early in the video. But either way, you got um, you got a lot of decisions to make. Calais Campbell, Justin Houston. Wow. And, of course, everything at wide receiver, everything that's not there at wide receiver. You like, And, again, with them limited draft picks, even though you know Ravens going to get more. They limited on the draft picks as as of right now, but you know that's gonna change. You know they ain't they ain't rocking out with no second round. Like yeah, they they definitely gonna trade for something, but they got a lot of decisions to make. The next questions on this episode came from my guy BB. He said, "Do you think the reason the media is on Lamar Jackson so negatively is because Ravens organization is a Christian faith based program, and these days we live in God is usually last, and anyone that is successful spiritually are usually more scrutinized than those that don't revere their higher power." I know you noticed the lack of media promotion Lamar gets. I've only seen a few commercials Lamar has been in. Players that haven't done ten percent of what he has done. Uh, have their own shoes and get two hundred thirty million dollar contracts. Thanks for the channel, family. Appreciate that, man. Um, no, I, I, I don't. I don't think that's it. I, I think it's just really because of um, the way. I think they don't want him to really change the game like that. I, I don't. I just think they don't want him to have uh, success like that, and uh, especially the way that he's done it because. First off, for just not having an agent, that part right there, um, and since he's just not a, they don't look at him like a traditional quarterback, like a normal quarterback. Um, I, I just don't think they want his uh, popularity to increase. Uh, he also asks if Calais Campbell, and Justin Houston retire after this year, and the Ravens move on from PQ, will that put the defense back in rebuild mode? Moving on from PQ is not a good decision. Ravens need to be smart in this decision. Look at that, on point with the previous question. It talked about Calais, Justin Houston, and PQ, but he said all that to say rebuild. Oof. Mm. So, again, with, with PQ, this is his third year, so 2020, 2021, 2022. This is third year. So this offseason, they could choose to pick up his fifth-year option. Uh, I mean, either way, next year they could have him. Um, they could trade him if they wanted to. Uh, I, I think I would love if they could keep him. Um, for next year too and, and just ride it out Whether they pick up His fifth year option or not I think they will um, But If they keep They can They could keep him For next year And then they could Probably trade him The next off season I just, I just still don't see Them keeping both Both Roquan and Patrick Queen For the long term I, I, I still don't see it um, But you did talk about That rebuild Like my guy just brought up And he also said Will Ravens go with Snoop Or will Anthony Brown Get an opportunity um, I mean, hopefully it'll be Lamar that we get to see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I don't think they will start Anthony Brown. I, I don't. Um, I think if, if Lamar doesn't play, I think they will still rock with Huntley. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Travis B. He said, hey, man, hope you and the family are doing great. I appreciate the grind and keep it up. I appreciate that, man. Thank you, Travis. Uh, with football coming to an end. <laughs> 
I, I like this question. He said, with football coming to an end, how do you go about the offseason? I personally watch a little more hockey, watch some past highlights. Just curious how you get through this tragic moment without football. Oh, if I'm, I'm not sure if this, this will be your first offseason here, but it don't stop. It don't stop. Stuff slows down a bit, but it, it, it don't stop. Uh, every, every day of the year, uh, we dropping stuff for y'all every day. And that's how it's been for the past three, four years, every single day. I, I think um, over the past three, four years, we may have missed maybe maybe two days over the past three, four years. There may have been two days where we, we didn't upload something. So every day, um, we still got plenty to talk about. Uh, we still going to be having fun on here. Uh, we still going to be having a good time. So stick around because it, it's, it's still plenty to do in the off season, especially this off season for the Ravens. Yeah, this feels like a dream.